If you want to plant a naturalistic meadow like this one here, replacing some of your lawn, this video is for you. Welcome back to Geeky Greenhouse. In today's video, I'll show you how to winter sow seeds and create a native flowering garden. One of the best ways to get a native perennial garden started is by winter sowing. So I wanna show you the entire process of winter sowing all of these plants and transplanting them into the ground. So let's jump back in time to when we planted our seeds. So what is winter sowing? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. You're sowing your seeds in the middle of the winter. There are many seed varieties that actually need a cold period in order to germinate properly. So by sowing in the middle of winter, you're essentially getting that done outdoors rather than trying to force it to happen in your refrigerator. Now you could winter sow directly outdoors right in the soil, but instead of doing that, we're gonna be using containers like milk jugs and other plastic recyclable containers, and we'll be repurposing them to essentially create a micro greenhouse-like environment. Now there are many benefits to winter sowing your seeds. The first of course is that cold stratification. Some seeds require a cold period, periods of freezing and thawing in order to loosen up the seed coat and make it easier for the seed to germinate. Another benefit is that you're creating that closed environment with a little bit of airflow, but it's much warmer inside here than the ambient temperature around the container. And so your seeds may actually sprout a bit earlier than they would if you direct sowed them. And lastly, compared to sprouting your seeds indoors, there's no need for grow lights, and therefore there's no need to harden off your plants when it comes time to move them outside. This saves energy, saves money, so if you don't wanna worry about that, this really solves the problem. Now you might be wondering which plants, which varieties can I grow with winter sowing? And there are a ton of different plants that are eligible for this method. If you want a more extensive list of plants and some links to where you can get seeds for those plants, check out the link in the description where we've written all about this process over on geekygreenhouse.com. But essentially you wanna look for some key words when you're researching your plants. If you see cold stratification or requires a cold period, that indicates that that plant needs a colder period and will benefit from the winter sowing method. Some other terms you can look for are perennial or self-seeding or self-sowing, or if you see that it's native to your region or that it can be planted in fall, that's another good sign that it can be winter sown. So a few examples I'll be planting today, these are cone flowers or echinacea, snapdragons, we've got prairie blazing star, this is liatris, we also have the pale purple cone flower. You can also plant poppies, agastache, eryngium, milkweed, and yarrow if you're looking to plant flowers. And if you wanna grow vegetables, you can plant bok choy or spinach or any of the cool weather leafy greens. You can also plant chives, kale, mint, rosemary, sage, oregano, thyme, or any other plant that doesn't mind a little bit of cold weather will likely be okay to winter sow. The last thing I wanna cover before I show you how to winter sow your seeds is when you should actually start doing it. I'll keep it really simple. You should start this right around the winter solstice. You don't wanna do it anytime before that because you risk having a random warm day, having your seeds sprout too early, and then going through the freezing temperatures of winter, killing off all your plants. So start on or even a few weeks after the winter solstice, which is around December 21st or 22nd in the Northern Hemisphere. Okay, so let's talk about how to winter sow your seeds. The supplies you'll need are your milk jugs or a similar container. You just wanna make sure that it is translucent and allows some of the light through. You'll need a razor blade. You'll also need a drill with a one quarter inch or similar size drill bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but around a quarter inch is fine. Some tape to close up the milk jug. I like this crystal clear Gorilla Tape just because it's clear, allowing more light through, but you can also just use some duct tape. A plant marker of some sort, you can use a plastic or just some tape like I'll be using, but just make sure that you use a garden pen or a garden marker because normal Sharpie doesn't really hold up in the UV light and this will. I'll leave a link down below where you can get a bunch of these for pretty cheap. I think it's a well worthwhile investment if you're a gardener. You'll need some well moistened potting soil. Make sure it's nice and damp. You don't want it to be dry at all. It's very important that it has plenty of moisture in there. So mix it really thoroughly with some water. And just normal potting soil is fine. You can add some compost or even some garden soil or soil from your yard just to sort of mimic the place where your plants will be going and get them used to that soil environment from day one. I've added just a bit of compost to a bagged potting soil. So the goal is to go from this to this, essentially we've created a makeshift hinge here at the base of the handle where we can pry it open, fill it with soil, 
and then close it back up with some tape. In the bottom, I've drilled holes, and on the top, I've removed the cap to allow a little bit of airflow, allowing rainfall to enter as well. So start by drilling five or six holes in the bottom of your milk jug. That's gonna act as your drainage. It's very important. You don't want this vessel filling up with water and drowning the seeds. Freezing and thawing that way won't work out well. So start with your razor blade and carefully insert it just at the side of the base of the handle and start making your way around very carefully. You wanna be as controlled as possible because the further you get around, I found the flimsier it becomes. As you make your way all the way around to the other side, just slow down a bit and make sure that you leave at least an inch, maybe an inch and a half of uncut milk jug there to act as your hinge and voila. Remove the top, you won't be needing that. Lastly, add a label. I'm just gonna use some scotch tape here and stick it on the side. If you wanna be extra safe, you can actually stick your plant label inside with the soil and the seeds. If you have especially long winters, that will provide a little more protection. But again, it's most important that you're using a pen that's UV resistant. Okay, so with that, we wanna open this up and add soil. And you really don't have to fill it to the brim. You can leave an inch or so of space to the top because you're only gonna let these seedlings get to a small size before they're transplanted out into larger pots. Okay, so we've got the two seed varieties. So when it comes to planting your seeds, it's really gonna depend on the variety. The size of the seed is a good indicator of how deeply it should be planted. So if you're dealing with really tiny seeds, like a lot of native plants, you'll basically just wanna sprinkle those onto the surface and press them into the surface. You won't bury them underneath the soil. And look out for varieties that actually require light to germinate properly. Again, you don't wanna bury those under a lot of soil or they won't sprout. So with these cone flowers, we'll just be putting them just below the surface, just a sprinkling of soil over the top. Okay, now with the seeds sown, if you need to spritz the surface at all, do that at this time, get it nice and moist in there. You wanna make sure there's good seed to soil contact. With that, we're ready to tape these shut and get them outdoors. So with the seeds planted, the last thing to do is to place these in the right location. So the best overall spot to put your winter sowing containers is in a partial shade location. There they'll get a little bit of sunlight to warm up during the day, but then they'll get some shade to start cooling off in the evening. Like I said, this is sort of like a miniature greenhouse, so the temperature inside will be a lot warmer than outside. So if you live in a place that gets mild winters where it doesn't really freeze too hard, you definitely don't wanna pick a location where it's full sun because then you run the risk of the seeds sprouting too early in those warmer temperatures or even solarizing and killing off your seeds, making them non-viable. But for us, we're gonna put these in a morning sun, afternoon shade location. So they'll get a little bit of warmth in the morning and then shade and overnight temperatures go down into freezing. So they'll have plenty of freezing and thawing periods. So with everything outside, the only thing we have to do until the seeds sprout is to check and make sure that the surface of the soil isn't drying out. So go out about once a week and check the surface of the soil in your containers. You should see condensation forming on the inside of the containers and that's a good sign. It means that there's still moisture in the soil and that you don't need to be watering. Once spring rolls around, you wanna start checking every day or two for germination. And once the seeds have sprouted, you wanna provide more aeration. So you can cut out little vents, little windows into the top half of your containers and gradually increase the size of those vent holes as time goes on and the plants are growing. Once the seedlings have one or two sets of true leaves, they're likely ready to be transplanted into larger containers or into their final location. So it is now early spring, it's mid-May, and most of our winter sown seedlings have sprouted. And today I wanna to show you the process of getting them out of the milk jugs and into individual containers. This is an optional step, but it helps isolate each plant, allowing it to grow on its own without competing with its surrounding seedlings. So as you can see, I've already transplanted quite a few into their individual containers. And I like to use leftover nursery pots. These are just three inch plastic pots, but you could use clay pots or whatever you have lying around. I'll be using this Echinacea purpurea, also known as purple coneflower as an example. I've also got some potting soil. You can use normal potting soil or whatever you use to plant the seeds. 
I'm using the same soil I used to plant the seeds, plus some native soil from where the plants will be planted outdoors, just to sort of acclimate them to those soil conditions. I like to pre-moisten the soil just a bit, get it damp, and mix it really thoroughly. Then I'll grab a pot and fill it about halfway with soil. And I like to tilt it on its side like this so that I can sort of lay the root system of the plant into the soil and then backfill all around the roots while it's laying in that soil. So to get the seedlings out of the soil, I like to just use a chopstick. You can also use a plastic butter knife or fork. Use the backside of the knife uh, to gently wiggle free the root system and work around each individual plant. Your goal is to loosen each individual plant's root system from the surrounding roots while damaging the roots as little as possible. So you can start by just sort of loosening the soil a bit by squeezing it from the outside like that. And then you can press straight down about a centimeter from an individual plant and sort of pry upwards gently. You wanna hear as little tearing as possible. So when you gently pull one free, you should see a nice robust root system. If you end up with a clump and there are multiple seedlings, it's totally okay to plant this. In fact, it may be safer to do it this way because you'll be damaging each individual root system less. And then you can just snip off the surrounding seedlings, leaving one individual plant. So then I lay them at about a 45 degree angle along the soil with the crown of the plant, in other words, the top of the root system, right at the edge of the soil so that it will end up on the surface when I add more soil to the pot. And then compress pretty firmly. You do want to secure it in there so that it stands upright. And then the last step is to just water it in. Now it's worth mentioning you could take this seedling and put it right into the ground using this same method, but again you're going to want to protect these young seedlings from wildlife, wind, the elements. So I like getting them established in larger pots so that they are a little bit bigger before going into the ground. So with the seedlings up potted, they're going to spend at least two or three more weeks in these pots and I like to put them in the location where they're going to be planted so that they're used to the conditions there. Next we'll be moving these into the ground in our final location and allowing them to establish where we'll have our beautiful meadow in about a year. Okay, so this is the area where we're going to be planting all of our native plants. As you can see, I've already planted quite a few, some of which were directly transplanted instead of going into containers, and a few of them were store-bought just to get some blooms the first year. Now we're going to take our potted plants and transplant them into the ground and get them established. So this is going to be really simple. Most of these are native plants, which means I'm not going to be amending the soil. I want them to get established into the native soil, which they should be really happy to grow in. Most wild plants really don't need heavy fertilizer or really fertile soil. So most of these are just going to go in the ground and get established. I will be trying to plant taller plants towards the center with shorter varieties along the sides. And I'm trying to keep in mind the mature size of the plants because even though they're pretty small right now, this compass plant can grow up to 80 inches tall. So I'll be grouping these plants together and most of these can be planted about 12 to 18 inches from each other. Pop it in. Backfill. And I like to create a little donut around it so that we can water very efficiently for the first few weeks while these plants establish their roots. And you can see immediately the benefit of up potting into small containers before transplanting into the ground. These are some black eyed Susans which were transplanted around the same time and they've been taking a lot longer to establish. These are much easier to see. We know they're not weeds and we won't accidentally pull them. So it's definitely a big benefit. And at this point, we just need to water regularly until the plants are established and then give them time to establish. Most of these plants will not flower in their first year, so it's really a waiting game. It's a long-term benefit, and there's a huge payoff waiting for us in about a year and a half. Okay. 
So it's now late August, and as you can see, some things have changed around here. Some of the plants actually flowered in their first year, which is a nice surprise, like these black-eyed Susans and those partridge peas off in the front there. There are a few other smaller bits of color around here, but we're really expecting the explosion of color next year when all of the perennials begin flowering. One thing I forgot to mention that I recommend you do just after transplanting in is protecting your plants from critters like mice and rabbits using something called liquid fence. It's basically something that deters rabbits and deer from your garden and will protect your plants from getting eaten when they're still small. And all of these flowers are buzzing with pollinators. In front of me now, I see tons of different insects visiting this naturalistic meadow setting. It's amazing to see all of the life already coming to this garden. We'll be sure to check in here on the channel next year when this garden is different once again. We'll see lots of purples and reds and oranges and different colors other than yellow, which seems to be the predominant color this year. I hope you'll transform part of your lawn into a meadow like this one. And if you do, leave some of the plants that you've planted in the description below. We're always curious and we'll probably expand this in the future. Thanks so much for watching Geeky Greenhouse and I'll see you next time.